so again, welcome to our information for Make a Change Canada for Thursday, March the 3rd, 2016. Thank you for joining us. My name is Anne-Marie Edgar and I'm the Executive Director of Make a Change Canada. I today am located in Castlegar, British Columbia. We're actually out at Selkirk College here attending the career and education fair at the college. And I'm outside just because I was having a few audio-visual issues being inside. So actually it's really nice out here. It's not nearly as bad and cold as it is in Ontario. Um, so I think I'll survive the hour. And yeah, I think the audio sound is a lot better um, outside versus inside. So that's, that's why I'm sitting outside this lovely environment. Selkirk College is a lovely campus. I went here myself when I graduated from high school. So it means a lot to me and, and this year actually Selkirk College is celebrating its 50th anniversary. Selkirk College historically is the first regional college that was established in British Columbia and we're proud to be a partner of Selkirk College. We partner with the college to deliver our IBDE Web Essentials and Web Advanced program. So for you um, IBDE students, this is your college, just to let you know. It's lovely. Um, and every spring there's a graduation ceremony out here, of course, which I proudly attend. So joining me here today is Mary Alton, our employment case manager here at Make a Change Canada, and also Douglas Tardif, who is located in Ontario, and he's our team leader. Now, Doug is currently filming a little film he's putting together for the Business Abilities Program, so yeah, he may be um, having a few things going around. If, if he does pop screen, I think I will call on Doug, but um, then you're, you're probably going to see this action, this filming action going on in the background. Those aren't really staying on my head so well, so I'm just going to take those off. Okay, so let me get started with the presentation then, and I will mention as well that Kayleen Selleck, who is our technology coordinator, is also here in the room and she's recording our session today. If you have any difficulties at all, feel free to reach out to Kayleen and she can help you. So just as an overview, what I would like to cover here today to begin with is who Make a Change Canada is and what we do. I want to talk about the clients and areas that we serve, our programs and services. We'll cover labour market information, which is a really exciting topic area for me. But yeah, we'll get into the labour market information in some detail. Then I'll talk about what's coming up at Make a Change Canada so that you can have a bit of an outlook on um, ways to become involved. And finally, how to contact us. So as I mentioned earlier on, please do feel free to tap, type into the chat area or come onto the microphone. Really, it, anything really goes in Make a Change. Um, in the classroom here, so feel free to join in. Now we did have Alan mention that he likes the heat, so he likes the summertime, and he can easily get around in his wheelchair. So we had a bit of an icebreaker early on, and I asked the question, what season do you most identify with? So that's where that's coming from. Thank you, everyone, for participating in that. So first off, just a little bit about Make a Change Canada. There's a couple of slogans here on this page. One is helping Canadians from coast to coast realize their full potential. Definitely that really portrays what we do here at Make a Change Canada. We're a national organization and our programs are definitely helping people get over hurdles um, in their lives and moving forward with careers. So that's really what we do. And then at the same time, another slogan is virtual learning real world. And that's definitely, again, who we're all about because our, our training is up to date and pertinent and we're virtual. So all our learning for our students is done in a virtual manner. The organization began with the name Canadian Society for Social Development and we actually renamed the organization in last year in 2015. The organization was founded in 2014 as a federal corporation 
and pardon me, 2004, and in 2005 became a registered charity. So that means that last year we celebrated our 10 year anniversary. It was a big year for us for sure. Our programs got their start in the Community Futures Organization. And that's similar to what you have back east, which are the Community Business Development Offices. We're a virtual organization with employees in BC, Alberta, Ontario, and New Brunswick. To date, we have served over 1,900 clients. So our mission here at Make a Change Canada, what we've gotten down in writing describing our services is that Make a Change Canada develops and delivers business startup and web technology training to people facing challenges to employment. This training is delivered from our program websites and features a self-paced and supportive learning environment. Through our online curriculum and our skilled and caring service teams, Make a Change Canada is empowering others to realize their full potential. Now we have a full set of guiding principles which are available on our website. And um, the link there is makeachangecanada, it's actually .com, but .org will get you to the site as well. I think it's good to bring up just a visual representation of all our programs here at Make a Change. On the one hand, we've got the IBDE Web Essentials Web Advanced Program, which is a web technology program teaching web development, and that's the program that we partner with Selkirk College in delivering. And then our other program is the Business Abilities Program, and that is funded through the Opportunities Fund for Persons with Disabilities National Programs. So we've got this entrepreneurship program and the web development, but really at the heart of it all is the heart and soul, and I, I would say our clients, our, our staff, there's a really a caring and supportive nature to the whole organization. We truly, truly love what we do. We, f we find it fascinating working with our clientele and so rewarding when we see people going on to getting over hurdles in their life. And uh, that's what we do. The, really at the center is the heart of it all. So we're really focused on helping people here at Make a Change. We're a registered Canadian charity that helps people get a new start and we love what we do. Now this here is a shot of our staff from our most recent Christmas party. We have these parties here in to Training, And our staff, it, it's, so, it's such a happy place to work and um, I think we're just very fortunate to work with the clientele that we do. But this was in one of our lighter moments and you can see Doug, um, who I introduced earlier, he's up on the top left corner and then Mary's on the right in the middle and then the four of us got together here in Nelson. There's myself and Chantal Orr, a business coach, and Marlisa, uh, Antifea, and Kelsey Burke, who's working in the IDDE program. Right above her is George Papazian, an instructor who also teaches at Emily Carr University. Jim Loki, a business coach in the top right-hand corner. And then Kayleen, who's in the classroom with us here today. And she lives in Surrey. So yes, again, the focus on helping people but when you think about it as a registered charity, we also rely on our volunteers to help us implement some projects. And our volunteers have been really important to help us with some important milestones for the organization. Um, for instance, a couple of years ago, our volunteers got together to transcribe some of our training videos so that we could put closed captioning into the videos for our deaf and hear hard of hearing clientele. And that was a really wonderful project. And Kayleen was actually on as a volunteer at that time and was such a wonderful um, asset to the team that she became the leader of the volunteer team. So that was one of our projects. And then we also ha got accredited as a charity. So we had a group of volunteers working on the whole accreditation um, project. And, and that was really nice. And we wouldn't have made it um, the accreditation if we didn't have all the help of these wonderful volunteers. Then most recently, in October 2015, we held a national extravaganza. And our volunteers were instrumental and pulling that together with us as well. 
So turning now to looking at where our clients live, literally our clients are from the tip of the country to another, to the other, straight, straight across. So we have great representation nationally of our clientele. And of course with the, the big pockets of clients being in the largest populated provinces of BC and Ontario. And also the Maritimes are um, big provinces for population and involvement as well. So this was a representation of clients in our business abilities program recently. And turning to the IBDE program, it's similar, um, the dispersal of clients with a little bit more in British Columbia, probably not surprisingly since the Web Essentials and Web Advance program is accredited provincially um, under Selkirk College. So who are our clients and what brings them to Make a Change Canada? I really like this visual and we developed these visuals out of a research study that we did a few years ago. Really getting into some good detail, collecting some good data from clients in the programs. And I've got to say that our clientele really runs the whole gamut from youth to older workers. There's a, a lot of people living with disabilities. About 75% of our clientele are people um, self-identifying as living with a disability. There's single parents. There are grandparents caring for their grandchildren. There are grown people caring for their own parents. There are people living in poverty. There are people who are doing okay financially. We have clients who are university educated to clients who are lacking formal education. People living in rural and remote areas and urban areas. So, you know, it really flows the whole gamut, but this is a nice representation of sort of the proportions of people falling into certain population groups. Our clients are talented, determined, and savvy, but quite often they're just stuck. So beginning with a success story, this is Colin. He lives in British Columbia, and Colin graduated from the Web Essentials and Web Advanced program. He took the programs a few years apart. He's a successful web programmer now. He, he totally builds websites through web programming. And so he just had a total knack for learning the programming skill. Colin actually works with us now as a peer tutor as well, and he does some programming work on our, old web, our, on our own websites. So Colin has an interesting story. He was actually volunteering at an agency in the Burnaby area in British Columbia. Colin's a wheelchair user, and he was having to commute an hour and a half each way, and he loved this position. He was actually promoted into a supervisory position in the computer lab. He, he made a lot of friends there, but unfortunately, the commute was wearing on his health, and his health was going down. So then he heard about the IVTE program, and he was really a star student, and like I said, he's never looked back. So, you know, it, it's, that's just one example of how this sort of programming can provide a solution for someone. And maybe it wouldn't have been his first choice, but in the end, um, it's what made employment possible for him. Now, here are a couple of testimonials, and they really touched me personally because I never used to think of our programs as helping to alleviate poverty. But the idea struck me when I was at an agency meeting here, actually in Nelson, and um, the topic that day was talking about poverty, and it, it kind of got me thinking. And then I read these, um, by chance, I just read these testimonials, and I thought, wow, you know, this is a real reality for people. So I'm just going to read them, because I think they're really powerful. So first, Kalinda from British Columbia said, it has been very difficult to come to terms with the changes in my life 
since the accident that left me with a brain injury three years ago. Programming in a quiet room is one of the few options I have now to contribute financially in my home. With this training, I have also been able to participate again in the business my husband and I built over the last 14 years. We are now able to offer web design as an option for our customers. So I really do find that touching that um, I think she's found some self-worth and some value, but also the ability to earn, earn an income. And then Willie from Saskatchewan said, the program was very detailed and very instructive. The program helped us tremendously and it will help us make a living. Being a disabled person, I need that because I can't go out to work. This program allowed me to set up a home-based business for me and my wife to work at home. So I'm sure you'll agree that those are some pretty exceptional testimonials. So I want to talk now about our Web Essentials Web Advance program. That's the IBDE program. And first off, again, there are online programs offered all across Canada. I mentioned that the programs are college accredited but here by Selkirk College, where I am today. They offer training in web technologies and design. The web technology programs are open to anyone meeting eligibility requirements. The intake involves a 30-minute interview and a basic computer skills assessment. The start dates, we've got one coming up May the 30th, and that's for the Web Advance program. And then Web Essentials, that's actually the first program that people take is the Web Essentials, um, but we're just at that point in the year being March um, that our next, next intake is the Advance. But Web Essentials will start again on October 17th. We've currently got a class of Web Essentials students just doing their final projects right now, so they're close to finishing up. So here's a, a photo, an actual photo of um, both Kelsey, who's our service coordinator in IBDE, and Mary in an opening session for the program this year. So, yeah, that's a really nice environment for people to be learning in and everybody partaking from home. Now, the skills gained in the programs are website layout and design techniques, Photoshop, HTML5 and CSS3 coding. For those of you not familiar with those terms, that's actually what makes everything you see pretty much on the internet appear as it does. Web marketing, that's really important uh, skills to be able to draw people to your websites properly. Then in the advanced program, we're teaching PHP and MySQL web programming, which are super hot skills right now in the marketplace. It's really in demand. Um, E-commerce, people are learning to integrate PayPal into websites, and also the theory on designing for mobile. The really neat thing about the IBDE program is that students are building their very own custom design templates. There are some out there that would claim that you can just pick up WordPress and start building websites. And you, you could, but you probably wouldn't be doing things that would be making customers really happy. So it's really important to learn the inner workings of website development. That's our approach anyway. So we're teaching that, and then in the advanced program, we're teaching WordPress CMS, which means content management systems. There's a practicum component to the Web Essentials program. Students build their own custom designed website for a business or organization in their community or for themselves. And the fees for Web Essentials is $3,995. There's also a software fee which is market dependent because the software is dependent, price is dependent on the market. So, but it's about $600 for the software and supplies. Then each Web Advanced course is $495 and there are four courses, so it's about $2,000 for the Web Advanced program. Now, this is the labor market piece I find so interesting. I mean, I'll admit that we go, we go five years back ourselves, we only thought of it as being an information technology program. 
And But the truth of it is, is that these skills are needed in so many different fields. Employers want people to have, to be tech savvy. When a employee, when a, a potential employee can go into an interview or show on their resume that they can do your social media, they can update your website, they can do your blog, they can design attractive visuals for you, or work the e-commerce end of things, it's a huge leg up in, in the labor market. And that's exactly what we're seeing happening. We, we'll, we're seeing people who worked in office administration, even as high level executive assistants, not being able to get the attention of an employer, but they take this program and it changes everything. Plus they're earning a college certificate. So I see graduates getting jobs in nonprofit agencies and those, you know, those aren't bad jobs. And the reason why they're getting them again is because they can do the work on the web. Marketing, a really great pairing is for people who have a background in marketing, say event coordination, but more the hands-on um, type of work getting on the phone, but not the technology skills. Today you need the technology skills. So these people are not only able to facilitate, um, let's say, community events and organize them, but they're able to do all those visuals. And that offers so much value to their customers to be able to encompass the whole event. So, so that's where we're really seeing um, careers take off. We have one graduate in Salmon Arm, BC, who is in the, the wondrous position to be able to pick and choose her customers as a result of taking this training. And she's able to charge money that she would never have been able to earn previously. Uh, we, we've had graduates work, go to work with businesses and again, um, doing their, doing their uh, e-commerce end of things, setting up shopping carts, pages, um, portfolios so that customers can go online and make purchases. And then, yes, we do certainly have graduates working as web developers in the traditional sense. Uh, generally, they're, they're getting on as a start working as junior, junior developers. So really neat, really neat learning for us as an organization. Very rewarding to be able to see the sorts of jobs and employment that people are gaining. So I did allude to the fact that the programs offer college certificates for the Web Essentials program. It's a certificate in web technologies and design. And for the Web Advanced program, it's a certificate in advanced web technologies and design. So the bottom line here is that with flexible and supportive online programming, the vast majority of our clients succeed. And these are snapshots from actual graduation ceremonies out here at the college, which is a wonderful highlight for me. Um, we have amazing graduates coming out of our programs and we stay in touch over the years as well as much as we can. And yeah, so the ma vast majority to succeed, I mean, really through support, it's amazing what, what can be achieved. Um, but the support's really, really necessary. Our program, our Web Essentials program runs about at least an 80% success rate, um, but we've had 100% in one year, and we've, we're looking at about an 85% success rate this year. So those are high success rates given that what's typical for an online program is 40 to 60%. I'm going to finish up on Web Essentials, Web Advanced by introducing you to another graduate of ours, Cameron from Ontario. And Cameron run, uh, writes for a very interesting blog. It's called cam.majorminor.ca. Cam was an exceptional student in our programs. And I would say what was really neat about Cam was his he lives with a very severe disability, but at the same time, he 
had the self-care, the self-management skills, that when he ran into real difficulties with his disability, he reached out to us as a team, so to our staff, and was able to get the support he needed to take a bit of a break. He, he had to get things under check. And we were able to listen and work the program for him. And he did. He graduated. He, he got his health in order, and he was able to graduate. So he sent us this email um, one day. I don't think I'm going to quite read it, but I'll give you the gist of it. He was working with the support of a community agency, and once he graduated, he got a job right away. He was so excited, he sent this email to us. And, um, yeah, he was just really thankful, and I think we were really thankful just to have Cam in our program and learn, um, learn from him and uh, how important it is for people to stay in touch with us and whatnot. I do recommend that you visit his blog. He writes about bipolar disorder, which is, I mean, reading his blog really touched me because it's such a debilitating disorder. And he just really gives you a good idea through his writing about what it feels like to live with bipolar disorder. Um, I think that that's a rare insight into, into his disability type. So I want to check in at this point. I've been doing a lot of talking. Um, I'm wondering, what do you think of our services so far? Have there been any surprises? What about, have we identified any issues that may resonate with you? So if you'd like to take a moment, um, if there's anything that struck you about this part of the presentation, Go ahead, let us know. Um, you can type in the chat area. Do you have any questions? Um, I will turn off my microphone. I think I'm going to ask Mary Alton, um, while we're just waiting for people to collect their thoughts, if, Mary, if you might have a few thoughts at this point in time. I'd be happy to share. No, my pleasure. So while everybody's kind of putting their own thoughts together, um, I started with the organization back in 2008. So for me, um, through the years that I've worked with the organization, what really strikes me is the you know amazing individuals that we see um, coming into our various programs. We have such a diverse population in group, um, and yet you know there are so many people that it's you know I relate to on a personal level and see certain qualities about myself and those individuals and vice versa. Um, I think that everybody who comes into our program um, generally is just wanting to make a change in their life, which is something I think most of us, if not all of us, come to at one stage or another, if not multiple times throughout our journey. So I really feel so blessed that we get an opportunity to meet and work so closely with individuals um, in the manner that we do. And, you know, the reality of how our services are delivered and the particular groups that we may see, um, we often are working with people who have hit some, some pretty significant roadblocks and are maybe not necessarily feeling that they're able to be successful without some support, without some, some guidance, but then that extra little help, an extra little push, an extra little bit of encouragement. Um, and, you know, I think it helps us uh, as individuals in our work to just grow, to be, to really have more of a, just a genuine desire to continue doing this kind of work because we see that it can make a positive difference. Um, and in the end, regardless of the outcome, I think we, you know, 95% of the time can say there's been some positive change in the person's life we've worked with. Even if their exact goal that they've come in with has not necessarily been where they've hit success. They've hit success in being able to feel more self-confident, to see more value in, in, in who they are and what they can do. Maybe it's given them more clarity about what they're really passionate about. Or maybe it was just giving them that extra level of encouragement and support when they did come in with an idea and they were just so passionate about it, to be able to say, 
yes, I can do this, and I'm going to do it, and now I'm doing it. So, you know, I feel very blessed to be a part of the organization. Um, you know, uh, each year I can say we have many people who I remember. I remember their stories. I remember their journey. They all have such a huge impact on me, and I, I know I can say for the rest of our team, you know, that's definitely the case. So um, it's a very special privilege to work with uh, the people we do. So um, all I can say is if you know somebody who may want to make some changes, then you never know. Maybe there's something that we have and some services that we can offer that might just help them in the right direction and, and get closer to what they want to do in their lives. So I hope that I hope that helped, and hopefully somebody else has something to share too. Thank you so much, Mary. You really you really have a great way with words, and I really appreciate hearing how you feel you've been impacted through your work. I, I feel the same way. Um, so Alan said it, it's great. I love the caring and support to mention only a few great attributes. Thank you. I had a wonderful couple conversations with Alan this year because he's he's back taking our IBDE program and um, yeah it's it's wonderful to have you in the program Alan. I, I must tell you that we genuinely enjoy your involvement. Um, you're a great great addition to our student load. And Natalie said, the support I received in IBDE was key to my success. I continue to receive fantastic support through the business abilities and understanding of obstacles and challenges that students face as well as ways to overcome them really helped too. And there is a positive atmosphere and team spirit. Wow, that's just huge richness. In, in what you have to say, Natalie. Thank you. And I have to agree with Mary. I mean, we're just, we're learning from our clients. I mean, there's something that struck me about what Mary said about the career path and 90% of people being better off as a result of being in our programs. What we've really learned is the career path for a person with living with a disability isn't linear. You know, there's there's going to be setbacks. Generally, it's 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 just not going to be a race for the top. I mean, even when a person doesn't have challenges, it's difficult to gain a foothold in the labor market. It's difficult to start a business. So, you know, there there's extra challenges, and we've really come to realize that. So, it's good to have what it's like for you as a client reflected back to us. So, thank you so much. I'm going to move on now to the next slide. Okay, now let's talk about business abilities a bit. So business abilities is an online program in entrepreneurship and career planning where clients research their business idea, prepare their financials, and produce a business plan. Participants also receive support when starting their business. So that's a little bit different than some of the programs that are out there. This isn't just 12 weeks in duration. It isn't just six months or a year in duration, and then the doors close. This is flexible, and once people write a business plan, they can still receive the coaching support that they need. Business Abilities is available free of charge to people who self-identify as living with a disability, and that's about 15% of the population in Canada. So it's a really staggering figure. I think we all have a family member um, living with a disability that we can think of, and we're, we're quite aware, we're growing more and more aware of the challenges that people face. Um, so it's different than the IBDE program, which is open to anyone. This people with in business abilities to be eligible must self-identify as living with a disability. The intake is continuous as well, rather than just having set intakes. And generally, we're doing an intake every month in business abilities. This is another visual out of that research study that we did, and I find it interesting because it shows the type of disabilities and the prevalence 
um, of different types of in a disability. And as you can see, there's a lot of spinal cord injury, uh, mobility issues, there's pain. Um, there's also a lot of mental health issues. And um, but we have clients who are deaf. We've had clients who are blind. Um, I'm seeing sleep in there, sleep being a problem. Yeah, so again, it's, I think it's just a really nice representation to see different prevalence um, levels. So what does Business Abilities offer? Well, at the center of it is the Business Abilities website. The program's taken online, of course, but there's also live business coaching. Each client in the program is assigned their very own business coach. These are amazing business coaches. I can't speak more highly of our business coaches. They're actual entrepreneurs, serial entrepreneurs. They know they've, they've been involved in all sorts of businesses and they know all sorts of resources. So it's a great opportunity for people to get some one-on-one -on -one assistance. We have online presentations much like this. And within the Business Abilities Program, we have a whole set of worksheets and clients in the program complete the worksheets, which in the end forms their business plan. The value of the program, really, there it is right there. There's Doug, our team leader, our, our main business coach, and he's just so experienced. So all our business coaches definitely are very experienced providing professional guidance. They help review documents and provide feedback. Again, as I said, they're highly entrepreneurial. They're great sounding boards. And we also provide the business mentorship support during business startup. Okay. This is interesting too. This was another piece of our study was what matters to clients in our program. Because we want we want to deliver quality program. That's that's essential uh, for us that we're very serious about making our programs high quality. So a lot of our questioning in the research was just what do you value the most? What do you want in a program? We asked our clients. What do you want in a coach? And um, not only that, but what do you see in our coaches? So that was the whole sort of tone of, of that part of the study. And they said that our coaches are experienced. Um, so experience was definitely big. But here you go, supportive, accepting patients. Those are huge factors. I find it interesting. I look on the fingers and I see kind. And kindness is so important. Um, you know, we, we, we must be kind to each other for sure. And so that's important to people. So we're listening. Um, we're always trying to live up to this expectation for sure. And um, I think we, we're doing a pretty good job. So. <laughs> so looking at a couple more success stories, here is Shirley from British Columbia. She did take both of the Web Essentials and Web Advanced program, and then she continued on and went into business abilities in 2012. I've met Shirley personally because she attended the graduation ceremonies here at Selkirk College, and, and we've also gone for coffee in her hometown. So a um, very special person. And Shirley has to say, the program saved my life, literally. I felt hopeless. Now I don't feel that way. I feel like I can control my destiny and do something to change my circumstances. It's a process. When, when disabled, you lose your self-esteem. I am a much better person now. So um, Mary always, always used to say when she read this slide during different presentations that we always thought that Shirley was always a lovely person. So. <laughs> Uh, we do have a bit of a chuckle at, at that wording, but always a lovely person. We also have some clients who have gone through our programs who have, I guess I could say, um, fallen into the limelight and, you know, they've made some really neat accomplishments. Um, so just to outline up in the top left corner, that's Jean Oostrom, and she lives in Barrie, Ontario. She is a brain injury survivor, and she's written about brain injury. She's sort of known as the go-to person for brain injury, but she tries an, to offer advice to caregivers of people with brain injury. And she, through her volunteerism, she was the recipient of the Queen Elizabeth 
the second um, Golden Jubilee Award for volunteerism. And then in the middle, at the top, that's Don Berry. And again, he received that same award in that uh, Jubilee year. And during that time, he had the honor of meeting with David Onley, who is the, was the Governor, Governor General at that time. A huge thrill for um, Donald. And then he met George Mephopoulos as well in person. So Don's just a delightful person. We've kept in touch over the years. And he has a knack for writing and editing. And he's one of our success story clients that we've done a whole write-up on. So we always love to write these stories. Um, and actually, Alan, who's in the room, we've written your story, which I always love, and we've updated it as well. So, And then down in the bottom left-hand corner, that's Louise Russo. And I don't know if any of you have heard of Louise. Uh, she's from Ontario. And she had the sad sad, sad misfortune of being the victim of crime. Um, she was waiting for a sandwich in a lineup in a deli in Toronto and uh, there was a gang shooting. She got caught in the middle and she was shot and she is now um, a paraplegic. So we stay in touch as well, but what Louise did was she didn't let that uh, you know, end things for her. She started a foundation called the Louise Russo Walk Against Violence Everywhere. And so what she does is that her foundation offers grants to youth to go out and have these projects in the community to speak out against violence. So I think she's really turned, you know, in this way, she's turned things into a positive for herself. In the middle, on the bottom, is Lynn Mui, and Lynn is actually on our board of directors. Now, Lynn is an author, and as you can see, she's at a book signing there. She has written three books about being a survivor of domestic violence and addiction. So very good books to read. I do recommend them. Um, if you do wish to find Lynn's books, she goes by a pen name and we can get you that information um, if you're interested. Now down at the bottom right hand corner, that is Dwight Thornton and he lives in New Brunswick. Dwight had an injury. It, um, I think he was an arborist, yeah. So he, he fell from a tree, he injured his back. And so he was no longer able to do that kind of work. So he kind of went back to his roots, which was to forage food from the wild. And that's what he's got on his back here. So um, he sells fiddleheads and uh, as well mushrooms that, that they harvest in New Brunswick. And a couple of years ago, he was on a show on CBC TV called Land and Sea. So he's really quite an entrepreneur and a real inspiration. So I want to check in here again. I'm wondering if there's anything in that segment that may have struck you at all. Uh, what program may be a better fit for you? Have you participated in our programs or volunteered? Have any of your clients, if you're here working as a career facilitator, what has been your experience? Or if you have any questions at all, um, please do feel free just to reach out. But I think at this point, I'm wondering if, Doug, you might be available. Was there anything at all that you'd wish to add about what I've said? I mean, you've been working in the Business Abilities Program for just about 10 years now as as a business coach. I'm not quite sure. Doug, Doug's um, in the middle of filming right now, so he may not be available, but which is fine if he isn't. No, I don't think Doug is available, So, and I don't see any questions coming in, so I'm going to move on to the next slide. What? Hey, Anne-Marie, if you wanted me just to, to add a few okay, comments. So we're getting closer to wrapping up here. Okay. If you're wondering what the hammering is, um, I'm out at the, the Career and Education Fair here at Selkirk College, and over on the patio, I think they're doing blacksmithing, so it's one of the demonstrations out here at the career fair today. So there's some hammering going on, which I didn't anticipate. Anyway, uh, what's coming up? Well, Business Abilities is a continuous intake. 
And um, so people can apply online on the Business Abilities website at any time. As I mentioned, the Web Advanced program will start up here on May the 30th. It's generally our Web Essentials graduates that are taking the Web Advanced program, but any practicing web developer is more than welcome to apply to take the Web Advanced program as well. The Web Essentials, the next intake, which is our 12th year, is starting on October 17th, 2016. So that'll be here before we know it. And we always recommend anyone wishing to take the Web Essentials or Web Advanced program to apply early because the sooner you can apply, um, the sooner you can get a letter of acceptance and get working on applying for funding in your community. So it is a fundable program. And there is funding available under skills training generally. Um, it can be some funding under opportunities fund. And it just varies by province. But there are opportunities to uh, have, have it funded. And I'm wondering, Mary, if you have the prospectus for IBDE handy, if you may be able to paste that in. Because there's a really good booklet that we've put together. It's called our Program Prospectus for IBDE that has a lot of great information for potential uh, students for the program. Okay, so sort of about closing off, coming back to the Make a Change Canada idea. What do we have coming up? Well, every spring we run a student showcase and website competition. We're going to be running that competition this May 2016. And the competition is, there's two categories. There's current year students and then there's prior graduates. So uh, going right back to 2005, any graduates can enter their websites. There, this is only for custom websites though. So we do have a panel um, that scrutinizes all entries to ensure that they're custom enough to qualify as an entry. They just can't be WordPress templates or something like that. But yeah, it's a really nice opportunity. We encourage you to watch out for that competition, vote and support our graduates. We just put out a 2016 calendar and we've sent it out to a lot of our clients, our partners, but we've got extras. So I just wanted to mention it that if you would like a copy, please let me know and we'd be more than happy to get a calendar out to you. It's only March <laughs> and this is a lovely calendar. The really special thing about the calendar is it contains the work of our own students and graduates. So um, it's lovely. There's photography, there's paintings, and it's really a keepsake. So do feel free to reach out to me if you would like a copy. Just looking back slightly, I mentioned that we had a 10-year extravaganza. So this was a shot. We actually shot it at another campus of Selkirk College. They're, they have a state-of-the-art theater for their um, contemporary music program in Nelson. And we were just so fortunate to have this event from that location. That's myself and our delightful host uh, generator. So it, it was a lot of fun. I'm really glad we, we, we put this event together because it was 10 years. And um, the whole event wasn't about us. It was about the success that people are achieving. So I do, you know, if you have a rainy Saturday sometime, it's really worth visiting, um, vi visiting the link and viewing the extravaganza. Because what we did was we played videos of our actual clients in the program, relating some of their stories and circumstances. So do take a peek. Um, you can reach that really easily by just typing in bit dot ly celebrating success and uh, that'll bring up the link <laughs> getting really close to the end now um, don't forget that we're in all the social media uh, and you can also attend these information sessions and I just want to reach out and thank all of our graduates and all of our guests for attending today thank you so so much um, if you like sharing your story, we're really interested in your stories. So, you know, you can you can always make that invitation. We'd, we'd love to do stories. 
and you can become a program ambassador, just spreading the good news, um, spreading the word about our programs. If you like volunteering, um, we're always welcoming new volunteers. And don't forget that we are a charitable organization and we can accept donations. More and more, we're starting to rely on collecting donations. So we're, we're an accredited charity and there's only 160 so far in Canada that have made that achievement. So we're taking this really seriously. Um, it is an option for people that do have the means to give. So, so before today, I'm just wondering if anyone has any questions about our programs, um, any thoughts or comments. Is there anything in particular that you've learned today that you didn't know? And uh, what are you taking away from the session today? So I'll just pause for a moment in case there's any questions. Oh, and Mary typed in to join our mailing list. I've added all the social media links there as well for everybody in case you want to check us out to, on any of That's actually a good point because we, we've got a writer on staff now and we're mostly our, our um, newsletters contain stories of our clients but also our staff and our volunteers so we try and make them more um, about stories and, and experience. And you can subscribe to our newsletter just by going to makeachangecanada.com and clicking on the subscribe button. So. Okay, I am going to, at this point then, close things off for the day. I want to remind you that we're at your service. We love hearing from you. Um, you can reach us by phone through web form on all of our websites. I want to thank you for attending. It's been really great. I'm getting a bit cold sitting outside, but um, I, I did make it and I'll go get a nice cup of coffee. I hope you will as well. And I just, again, yeah, thank you so much for joining us here today. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>